Good evening and beyond the new, my fond, fair friends, family, and subscribers. This is your humble narrator, the Omnis Rouge, here to bring you yet another part of what if a monster hunter was sent to the world of Ruby. Now, where we last left off, oh, so much fun was had. They got, they were able to capture Roman. Igni was able to stay out of 90% of the trouble. Him and Pyra got on better terms. And he was able to start a horticulture club. Until Team Cardinal, well, decided to do what they do and screw it all. Up. Now we're cutting back to Igni, who's currently on the way, his way to his dormitory. Now, why would he be going there? Simple. He has a particular niche that he needs to fill. Revenge. Not only for what they did to poor Jean, but what for they did to his, well, family, you could say. Oh, yes. Poor, poor Ignatius. The amount of rage that fills his heart, his soul, right now. Well, let's just put it this way. It can only be compared to a nuclear reactor with how much energy it's flowing into him. The rest of Team Igni is closing in, but they are not quite fast enough as he enters the room and locks it. Team Igni thinks that he's going, well, to cry. Some people, some is what Natasha thinks. Gallen thinks he's going to break something. But Eugene, Eugene knows the only reason he locks the door like that is whenever he's changing. Because he would only do that for the bathroom. But. He must be bringing out something. Big. When he walks out. He is donned in what looks to be. Well. Very ancient looking armor. Made of bone. And leather. As he walks, you can hear the slight jingle and jangle of the bones clicking and clacking against each other, making a somewhat horrifying sound, a somber sound, if you will. <laughs> But then they see a weapon that they've never seen. On his arm, his right arm appears to be this weird looking scarabesque buckler. And on his back seems to be this long, thin spear. As they take a better look at it and, well, there you are. Saying, Igni, what are you planning on doing? He remains silent. Igni, slow down. What are you planning on doing? Gallant says. He remains silent, but keeps walking. Eugene gets right up in front of him. Stop! And 
For a brief moment, he stops and looks at him dead in the eyes. Let us help. What are you doing? Vengeance is mine. As he taps, or rather say pats, Eugene on his shoulder and says, A man's got to do what a man's got to do. I'm going to see if I can show Team Cardinal what this man can do. None of you interfere. As he continues walking forward, Gallon goes, ah, I figured something like that's gonna happen. Natasha, we gotta stop him. He's probably gonna kill one of them. Eugene, no. That'd be too easy. No, he's going to make them wish for death. What do you mean? That look in his eyes. That's not the Ignatius we know. That's the guy that we saw at the docks. At the warehouse. Yeah, which means... It means... He's not going to do anything stupid. The only reason he was going to eliminate Torchwick was because it made the most sense. When he's like that, it's like he's in a different world. Look at him. No wasted movement. You can't even hear his footsteps. You only the jingle of the bones on his armor. As they watch, as he slowly but steadily keeps going further and further down. Well, we can't just... We're not. Come on. We're going to make sure our crazy bastard doesn't do anything too crazy. After all, we're his team. Right, right, right. As they begin to follow, as everyone in Beacon who is spotting and seeing Ignatius as well, they're kind of laughing. Some of them are kind of startled. And then... He finally makes it to Team Carden. As people are taking pictures, videos, and everything else. He makes it there. And bangs on their door. Uh, what is it? As one of them opens the door. And is immediately met. With a very large hand grabbing them around their neck and pinning them next to the wall outside of their dorm. The rest of them panic and rush out as Ignatius says, Listen here, you vile, idiotic, moronic pieces of shrock. You're going to fight me. I'm going to break every single one of you out of this habit you've developed. I'm going to do what every educator in here should have done with you all on day one. As he begins to squeeze the young man's neck. So you're going to accept my challenge or I'm putting this guy in the infirmary the same way you did to Jean. Understand. As Carden walks towards him. And what makes you think that I'm going to accept anything 
or any terms from you. As he goes to throw a sucker punch. All that happens there is that he's met with a swift kick to his shin before the punch can even make contact. Causing him to wince in pain, jerk back, and slam his fist onto Ignatius's burnt, well, pauldron, if you will. As he uses his other hand to reach up and grab Carden by the neck and pick him straight up in the air. You have no choice. You put one of my friends in the infirmary. And you destroyed something very sentimental to me. I'm going to make every one of you pay. And hell, just to make things quicker, you can all come at me at the same time. So let's go, boys, to the arena, now, as he drops them both. Carden quickly gasping for air while the other guy is, well, visibly shooken. The students see this and just go, oh no. As Team Igni watches in suspense. But they follow their leader. They follow him. And watch over him. As they finally get to the arena. The day was a day. The day. Well, it's evening time. School's been out for a little while. And... Miss Galinda is there, well, basically reading a book in her private time. And then she sees all of the, the people enter in. She notices Ignatius with the strange weapon on his back and even stranger armor. She notices Team Cardinal walking in behind him, and followed by the rest of Team Igni. Ignatius, what are you doing here? I need to use the training room. Oh? Whatever for? Simple. I need to show these guys a few tricks. As he points to Team Cardinal. Uh-huh. As she says, I'll need to check with Mr. Ospin, Professor Ospin. Why don't you all sit down and relax while I get confirmation? As, well, they all kind of do. Except for Ignatius. He stands and takes out his insect glaive and a whetstone and begins to sharpen it. With every pass he makes over the blade, sparks fly due to the pressure as well as the sheer, well, strength to which he is cleaning and maintaining the blade's edge. She contacts Mr. O Professor Ospin. And Professor Ospin's, well, the conversation goes a little like this. I see. So, he's inside there, is he? I take it you already know the reports about what happened to poor Jean this morning. Yes, he was badly beaten, most definitely, beyond badly even. He was darn near broken. He had quite a few minor injuries on the surface, but a few internal injuries that 
would have taken a lot of time to heal without his aura. As well as Ignatius's garden was destroyed. So what I'm hearing is he's more than likely found the culprits and is planning on teaching them a very painful lesson. So don't let them know. Do let them. I'm sorry, what? If you don't let them fight there, he's going to drag them off campus somewhere else and fight them there. And fight them somewhere. He won't rest until he gets his revenge, quote-unquote. Or at least until he's had enough. The thing is, do we let him go out on his crazy spree of destruction where we can't keep an eye on it and where one of those students could be killed? Or do we have it in an area we can control and maintain? She smiles and says, you're right. Very well, I'll set it up. As she says, confirmation's been confirmed. Confirmation's been given. You, we can now set you all up. Who's going to be going in first? Me versus Team Cardinal. I'm sorry? All four of them, one of me. It's the only way this is going to be anywhere remotely fair. You're worried about it being fair. No, I'm worried about it being over too quickly otherwise. As Ignatius gets up to the stand and takes out his insect glaive and gives it a few, well, flourishing spins. You know what I'm talking about. The circular motions going over and over. The showing off, similar to what a baton twirler does. Except instead of a dull baton, whenever he swings the edge near the ground, he is quite literally carving into the wood. <laughs> As the rest of Team Cardinal goes and takes up their positions. Oh, those poor, poor souls. <laughs> As Cardinal himself says, you know, this is your last chance to walk away. We can't guarantee your safety with all of us here. Ignatius says nothing. As the battle starts, two of the boys charge in at him. At, their, at the sides of Ignatius, but he plants, well, the smaller spike at the end of the staff into the ground and launches himself forward with a large boom. They go, huh? Wait, what? And then while in the air, he swings it around, bringing the back of, bringing the edge, the rear end blade behind him. And then you hear a large boom again catapulting him throughout the other side of the sky, shooting him through the other side of the arena as he brings the larger blade down on Karn, who barely has enough time to react and bring up his mace to guard. But that was the worst thing he could do. Because as he guarded from the attack, he used the, Ignatius used the momentum and the lowering just and his body's lowering, well, descent to swing in and kick him straight in the solar plexus, sending him flying, well, to the, to the other side, uh, right into the barrier. <clears throat> Pardon me one moment, getting a little tongue-tied. The member of Team Carden that was right next to him tries to swing his weapon at Ignatius, only to be parried with the, with the tail end of the insect glaive, kicked in the shin, 
and met with a punch to the face from his offhand. The other two who have recovered from the shock try and charge forward. Oh, bollocks. Sorry about that. As he raises up his offhand and releases the, gins, the Ken sect as it charges forward. And they see this, well, giant blue beetle with giant pincers. You know, this beetle that's about the size of a football, if not larger. Just charging forward. And they go, what the hell is that? As one of the men dodge and the other one just starts swinging his whip and randomly. Trying to block or maneuver it. Oh, but it's... It's too late. It's already given him more than enough time to distract them. Well, he brings the pole of the insect glaive underneath and swings it underneath his current opponent's legs, knocking it out from under him as he raises up his left leg and stomps with the might of, well, an anginath, you could say. Right dead center on his chest, over and over and over. Each slam getting more and more intense, each stomp feeling like it was bearing more and more weight. To a point to where this young man's aura is barely holding, and the area around the arena was beginning to crack and cave until finally a loud <laughs> as his aura finally dissipates and he is slammed into the arena ground. Next victim. As he swings the, so the small blade of the insect, to go the small side of the insect glaive around, launching himself diagonally toward into the air, doing an amazing flourish distracting his opponents quite intensely as he brings the small side the, as he brings the tail end of the glaive and points it dead at well Carden and he fires off some nectar now what do you think now what do you say nectar so simple how do you think you control the insect glaive, the kinsect of the kinsect glaive? There's a certain little bit of nectar that you can launch at certain parts of a monster's body. And it goes forward, gathers the nutrients, comes back and redistributes them with you. But in this point, he's aiming at Cardin's chest and the kinsect obeys as it charges forward and will carnage in. Well, <laughs> he panics, obviously. I mean, how wouldn't you if you saw a giant, a football sized beetle running, flying straight towards you? Yes. I believe we would all panic at one point or another with that. <clears throat> As he refocuses his attentions, does a 360 degree flourish around his head and brings the blade to bear against, well, the weapon of the Team Cardinal Grunt, shattering it. As he lands, he follows up with a solid kick to the head. Boom! Sending him flying to the other side of the arena. The other guy comes in and tries to do an overhand swing. Ignatius takes it and blocks it with the pole, with the staff of the, well, insect glaive. As he kicks him right square in the nuts. Remember, Ignatius is pissed. He doesn't care where he hits, as long as he hits. 
<clears throat> Even with the aura, that still hurts. And for a brief couple seconds, he flinches. He lets his guard down. Big mistake. Because Ignatius takes that opportunity, swings the staff around, moving the weapon off of his, and then, well, over his head and slamming it down onto his, collar, onto his opponent's collarbone. As he lands, Ignatius picks him up and essentially begins to spin to win. As he grabs his legs, puts them underneath his shoulders, and starts spinning around and 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 around until he reaches the utmost centripetal force he can. And then he tosses him. He tosses him straight into his fallen comrade. As upon landing, he charges straight at them with his horns. Both of them are in shock. Both of them are flabbergasted. Their auras are nearly broken. They try to dodge. And luckily for them, they miss the horns. But Ignatius was planning on that. Because upon them dodging just slightly out of the way, both of his hands slam into their guts, breaking their auras and causing immense amount of pain and anguish, causing so much to surge through them that they cough up very profusely. One of them even begins to throw up as Ignatius takes his right foot and, well, kicks the boy that's, kicks one of them in the head that's already bent over and on the ground, knocking him unconscious. He walks over, steps on his insect glaive, Rolls underneath, rolls his foot over it to where it pops out. Puts his foot underneath it before it hits the ground and kicks it skyward. As Cardin finally gets a little bit of reprieve from the insect, from the kinesect, my apologies, he charges a now unarmed Ignatius not realizing that the insect glaive is currently in the air above him. He brings out his mace and tries to hit him in the side, only for it to be caught in his hand. Ignatius just catches the mace that Cardin swung in his bare hand. Grabs it by the head as he swung with full momentum, stopping it dead in its tracks. As he reaches his right hand upwards, grabs the insect glaive and slams it down against his shin. <clears throat> Son of a... As he does it again, slamming it down against his sternum. And he does it again, slamming it down on his right forearm. Cardin lets go of his mace finally, as Ignatius grabs it, flips it around, and stabs the insect glaive, his large blade, into the ground. As now he moves forward, wielding Cardin's mace in his left hand. You destroyed my garden as he kicks him over. <clears throat> you beat up Jean, a person who I was teaching, as well as a braver soul than you, as he swings his axe. Well, 
his mace overhead and brings it down upon Cardin's what remaining aura, smashing into it. <clears throat> Cardin tries to roll out the way, but is immediately met with a stomp right onto the gut, <clears throat> draining his aura even more. You destroyed the only thing I had left of my family. What are you talking about? I didn't kill anyone. You might as well have. That book you tore up meant more to me than all of your lives. What? As he brings Card's mace down on him again, shattering his aura. <clears throat> As Cardin's nose begins to bleed. What do you mean? That book was given to me by my sister. My sister, who I don't even know is alive or dead. My sister, who I care about very much, and you tore it apart. Well, congratulations, Cardin. I'm gonna show you what happens when you mess with my family. As he's about to bring the mace down a final time, as suddenly he's put in a large purple bubble. Before he even realizes it, bringing the mace to bear against the shield, Boom! A light crack begins to form. <sighs> Let me go, Glenda. It's Miss Goodwrench. And no. Let. Me. Go. Glenda. As he slams against the barrier again. Boom! Cracking it some more. You need to calm down. I need my revenge! As he slams it again, making another small cracks appear. Making more small cracks appear, not another, more. <laughs> As she picks him up into the air and slams him down onto the training ground. Calm down. I realize what they did, but you're going to kill them at this rate. <sighs> you're right. They aren't worth, they aren't worth it. As he tosses Cardin's mace over towards him, you got lucky. You got lucky that I value my friends. That I value my new life. More than I value taking yours. If you ever try and mess with any of my allies again, I'll break every bone in your body first. And then leave you for the Jagras to clean up. As he collects his weapons laying on the ground and calls back his kinsect. How much detention do I have? None. Mm -hmm. None. Your week with Miss Pyra is over. There's no more detention left to be had. So you're saying, I'm saying that you are not in trouble for what you did here. As long as you can heal them up for whatever you damaged them for. I'll bring the herbs over to the, over to the uh, infirmary. I'll have them there before they even get there. Good. 
and try not to cause any more problems. I'll try. As he walks away and straight towards his team. Hey guys. Yeah, Igni. Eugene. Dallin. Natasha. As he look takes off his helmet and looks at him. And they could see tears rolling down his face. And a weak smile. Would you guys mind helping me fix up the garden? Please? You see, it took more for him to walk away than anyone would realize. And while he does agree that killing them isn't the right thing, he believes, he feels deep down that he should have done a lot worse. And holding back all that rage, all that anger, curbing it and sending it off to the side, it'll have physical reactions. And in his case, he began to cry. As they get to the garden, begin healing it all up and setting things up. <laughs> Eugene had an idea, a good thought, as he goes over to Gallon and asks, Hey, Gallon. What? Remember that photo you took of Igni a couple uh week last week? Remember when we got him to take up when we got the uh him to reveal his le past his uh, tattoo? Yeah. Well you say you've send it. Send it? Yeah, send it to the people you know here. Like giant chain link. <laughs> I, I don't, come on, dude, come on. You know it would be funny. It looks like he'd use a laugh. It's like, I think he'd try and murder us. Eh, maybe, but he'd be laughing about it. I don't know, come on. Eh, fine, fine. As he opens up, pardon me one moment. Sorry about that, I had to sneeze. As he opens up his scroll and sends a group text message to the people he knows. <laughs> Which, unbeknownst to the rest of Team Igni, is quite a large list. As now virtually, well, most of the key people in school... Now have a bit of a full-on picture of Ignatius's back tattoo. And the caption for it is, We got Igni to reveal, to reveal his final one. We got Igni to reveal the one that he's been hiding from everything. <laughs> what do you guys think? As they all kind of look at it. Well... A few of the guys laugh. A few of the girls blush. And, well, a few of other people are just indifferent to it. Then again, concerning the circumstances, I guarantee you there's also a few other guys that are blushing. Oh, yeah. Remember, modern times, brothers and sisters... Not saying he rolls that way, but you know there's bound to be a few of them that would be, that would look at it around that, that would be uh, attracted to that. 
a few people that'd be attracted to that. So, yeah. <laughs> and they see all that, and he, and, uh, yeah. Including the ones that get the texts are, well, Team Juniper, as well as Team Ruby. Jean and Rin are just kind of looking at it going, wow, really? Nora says, oh, that looks awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. Wait, I wonder if I should get something similar like that on my back. No, 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 Rin says, no. no don't, don't do that. As Pyra is just kind of looking at it going, eh, it's accurate. Like, what? Well, can you really describe him any other way, really? I mean, he's strong, he's fast, he's got good instincts, he's a beast of destruction when he needs to be, and he's a hyper-protective parent whenever he's not, whenever he doesn't need to be. Eh, that doesn't scream alpha male, I don't know what does, as she kind of walks out. Hmm. Meanwhile, as for Team Ruby, Yang is kind of going, Hmm. Not bad. Bet that took a while. Hmm. I wonder if I should get something like that. You know, alpha female. Hmm. Maybe in yellow or orange. Maybe red. Ruby just kind of goes and goes, <laughs> Uh-huh. Neat? Weiss is kind of going, I don't, why would he do that? And Blake is just going, okay. Yeah, he is, uh, that is somewhat descriptive, but, uh, oh boy, I can see why he hides it. As... Ignatius has now gotten a new nickname around Beacon Academy. As he next day rolls by, Ignatius is back to being Ignatius. And remember, that means wearing a school uniform instead of this beautiful set of armor. As he walks through the school, virtually everyone he comes across starts calling him, Hey, what's up, Alpha Male? Hey, Alpha Male, what's up? Hey, Top Dog! And Ignatius is just going, Wait a minute. Yeah, turn! Talon! As both Eugene and Gallon now have a three foot long white streak running up their back and in case you don't know what that means it's an old country boy saying meaning they feel as if the grim reapers are coming for them oh boy oh boy if nothing else they at least took his mind off of everything else that happened that week. Everyone's getting set up for the dances that are coming up. And everyone's trying to relax and have some fun. And that's where I'll leave this episode off at. I hope you all enjoyed it, and hope you all had fun, and boy, oh boy, yes. Ignatius, who has never danced a day in his life outside of ceremonial dances that are nothing like the school versions, he is going to be asked and bombarded with quite a few different, well, requests. Oh, the burdens of being the, one of the more popular people. Am I right, people? Don't you feel so sad for poor Ignatius? Popular mother...
Anyways. <clears throat> well, I hope you all had some fun. I hope you all enjoyed your time here. And please, if you feel like it deserves it, leave a comment and a like. Ta-ta for now.